Welcome back to the channel guys. This is the Clockwork Pico Calc. I absolutely love this thing at the moment. I'm having such a blast with it. What is it? So essentially what this lovely looking device is, is a terminal for a Raspberry Pi Pico running Pico Mike Basic. So when you first boot this device up, it boots straight in to a basic interpreter. So for those of you kind of nostalgia freaks out there that are probably around my age, um, it's very similar to like when you used to turn on a Commodore 64, you just get like a prompt and you can just go straight in and start typing basic commands and writing programs just like immediately. It's just absolutely brings back so much nostalgia. So just print Andy there and then it prints obviously what I'm telling it to do, it does. And obviously it gets more complicated than this. You can build entire complicated basic programs. That didn't really make sense that sentence, but you get what I mean. And I'm just finding it absolutely brilliant to tinker with. It's bringing back so many memories and I used to do quite a bit of basic programming um, in my teens. So yeah, let's take a look at the device itself because obviously that's why you're gonna be buying this for the for the hardware because obviously phones can do the same thing. There's no need to have a, a device like this, but it's just kind of cool to get you away from your phone and have a device that you can work on um, as a standalone device. I mean, I love standalone devices. So if we turn it round, you can see here we've got basically two 18650 batteries in the back here, um, which take up the majority of the back of the case. And that's giving you just a huge amount of capacity. These are linked up in parallel. So I've got like two, three and a half thousand um, milliamp hour batteries in here. So, you know, this thing's gonna run forever. Um, now, at the top here, you can see we've got a Pico here. There's also, you can see another board in here, which I'm gonna come on to later, which I've added to this. But this is the Raspberry Pi Pico here, and you can access the USB port on that um, up the top here as well. So you can see that there. Also, there's a charging port on top as well, USB-C. It'll work with power delivery, and it basically just, yeah, just charges the 18650 batteries here as well. Not super fast. It's, it's kind of quite conservative on the charge rate. It still seems to charge those up pretty quick, though. Got a headphone socket at the top. There's also two speakers under here left and right when you get this you kind of have to assemble it it's not really very hard at all you just basically put it together and then screw it up it took me about 10 minutes literally 10 minutes um, only because I was faffing around with trying to get this screen trying to get all the dust out from behind the screen that had got in there when I was doing it but anyway it still doesn't look great <laughs> I need to kind of redo it again now on the side here you've got a full-size SD card that's used for storing programs you can store programs onto this SD card or you can store them on the internal flash of the uh, the Pico itself as well on the other side you've got like a rotary volume control there and you've got a header which is basically headers for the Raspberry Pi Pico and the STM32 I believe that's in there that's uh, controlling the keyboard so you can see that they've provided these stickers so you can kind of um, match up where those where those pins are actually going to so that's quite cool you've got some sort of ways of connecting external hardware um, if you want to that's kind of the cool thing about this you can use this for so many different things so on the front you've got this screen it's not OLED or anything like that but it's super bright actually it's really very vivid in even in sunlight you can read this pretty well um, especially if you kind of use like high contrast color fonts and stuff like that the keyboard now the keyboard is something i was so impressed with when i kind of got this um, you can hear it sounds a little bit clicky but this is such a soft keyboard to type in and because of the form factor of the device if you're just kind of holding it like this um, you know it's bigger than a phone but it just means you can actually get some serious sort of work done with this it's actually really decent keyboard. The other thing I really like about this is the backlight. I don't know if you'll be able to see this in the camera. Maybe if I just turn these lights off here. Um, no, there's still too much light coming in, but there you go, you can see it there. It just looks so lovely at night. So obviously I haven't mentioned yet that this kind of screen insert looks a bit like a Game Boy, and especially with this, this power light here as well. Um, it really does, and I love the way they've got the, um, the font sort of down sideways on that as well. It just looks so cool. But this little light here also doubles as a power meter as well. So it flashes a few times to show it's full, twice, medium, and then obviously once. It changes color as well. It goes to like a yellow when it's um, running down on power. But I've not actually managed to deplete these batteries yet in this at all um, and I've been plugging it in maybe every two days and it's actually been on most of the time running one of the little programs that I've made which I'm going to show you in a minute. Now obviously I've mentioned that this device is powered by the Raspberry Pi Pico and that means obviously it's not the most powerful device in the world but it can get a lot done. It's actually quite surprising how much you can do with a Pico. Um, so if we go onto the the command prompt and we type in memory you can get an idea 
for how much memory we're sort of dealing with here. Um, you can see here I've got 1k of my program memory taken up here, which is 75 lines, and you'll see that program in a, in a minute. It's not, you know, the most um, simple program in the world, but We've still got 131k free, 99% of the available program memory. So that's pretty cool. Obviously, at the moment, no RAM's being used. We can type in files here and we can see what files we've got stored on the flash. And it's going to give you a hint um, to what I've been playing around with on this um, in the last couple of days. But yeah, you can see here, these are programs that I've actually saved to the internal flash. Now, if we want to have a look on the SD card, we can do that by going drive um, B colon. It's, it's a little, it's kind of a bit like Microsoft Basic, actually, this um, device. You can flip over to drive B, type in files. You can also do this as well. So you can do, do your usual um, memory uh, recall of the last you know commands you've typed in, which is super nice. Um, so you can do that, and we can see there's lots of stuff on the uh, on the SD card here. Some of this stuff's quite large as well. You can see there's actually like a, a NES ROM file as well for, for playing like a Nintendo emulator, which I haven't tried yet, but it's something I will do a bit later on. So to load programs, you can simply type in load. Um, inverted comma, and then we can type in mesh core here, which is what I've been working on, dot um, BAS, and then obviously the inverted comma again, and then you hit enter, and then that will load the program into memory. So now that the program's loaded, we can simply run that program. So you can see here, we've got a MeshCore hyper terminal, which I've created. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with MeshCore, it's basically an off-grid radio networking system. And we can see already um, some messages have started to come in from, um, from our mesh. <laughs> so how is this happening then? Well, basically what I've done here is I've put in an extra board here, which is effectively a lower radio with an ESP32 um, chip. Now this development board is pretty popular. It's called a Helltech Lower 32 V3. And all I've literally done is connect this up to power and one of the UARTs, which I'll show you in a minute in the program. And I've just kind of soldered inside the board so that we don't have to have wires hanging out here. So my little basic program here allows me to use this device on MeshCore, I can send, I can receive messages, I can do lots of things, I can see node lists and all sorts of other stuff and really just communicate with the radio hardware inside there and kind of make a little user interface for it. And that's what I've been tinkering with, just, you know, sitting in front of the TV, you know, and doing a little bit of basic um, kind of programming to make this little bit of software that's allowing me to use this device with MeshCore. So you can see here this kind of like old school intro screen <laughs> that kind of reminds me of some nostalgic Commodore 64 program or something like that. Um, and I've got this shortcut menu with um, basically when you press the ca any character on the screen it will just it will just make the radio hardware do something or get some information from it so for example if we just push the p button here we can send a public message and you can see there it's just it's brought a cursor up so i can go test for youtube and then send that out and you can actually hear it bleep on this other radio on this other device I've got here you can see test for YouTube there and we'll see if anything comes back see if anyone replies so you can see here new messages coming in um, it's saying received YouTube I can reply to that by basically saying here thanks and then we'll send that out the little dot here shows that it's actually been sent as well, or it's executed that command to send to the to the radio. Um, the little two here at the top shows that um, this station is two hops away. Um, this is part of the MeshCore firmware, so this is something that's running on the actual radio hardware. It's not running on the on the basic side. So there's kind of two parts to this really, like the the um, software that's running on the radio chip that's in here, and then obviously the um, the basic kind of interface program that's running on the top. So I've woken up more users here as well. These funny little symbols are when somebody sends an emoji because this obviously can't deal with the emojis so it just kind of displays some funky symbols. Um, the advert here as well is is, a, is part of the MeshCore system which um, like 
basically announces that a radio or a you know a client is is available so you can see there it's displaying these in real time so this is like a bit like a feed of information that's coming in um over radio so you can see subnet rat companion here he's written video 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 he is four hops away so the hops again means that you're basically hopping through uh devices radio devices on a radio mesh so yeah if you want to know more about this i'll leave links in my description uh, of this video uh, so you can find out more about meshcore but yeah it's all um it's all working nicely so i'll write in here not long to go <laughs> um and we'll send that one send that one out so that's the program then we can push by hitting Q I've made that an option so it just says buy um, and then we can use the built-in editor to actually have a look at the program so this is a built-in editor and you can see here this is basically the code behind this little bit of software that I've made this program so you can see it sort of starts by setting the pins for the GPIOs to connect to the radio inside um, and then it kind of opens the the com port and that 115200 is the board rate so all of this stuff is documented in the mm basic user guide so you can kind of get hold of that by going to this this website here um, and i'll leave some links down below in the description to make it a bit easier as well the actual basic interpreter port for the pi pico is written by this guy um jeff he's got a website here uh, that kind of explains everything and you know gives you a lot of information on what you can do with this but the basic that's running on this i haven't actually found that hard I can't, again it kind of brought back a lot of nostalgia and you know i could kind of get get to grips with it pretty quickly um, just by kind of you know jogging my memory with a few things so these all things like variables some things are different like you know setting colors um, that was always a, a slightly different way of doing it um, than we've got here like color rgb um, you have to initiate that so i did not actually reach out on the pico calc forum and got a, and i got a pretty instant response um on that so that's quite good there's lots of help out there if you need it um you know things like in keys that's that's the kind of way that you ha would have basically the screen just kind of you know sitting there statically waiting for a an input and then it will interrupt obviously your program when you press uh, a command the other thing you might have noticed if you did any of this stuff back in the day is the omission of line numbers so in the old days we had like 10 20 30 40 going down the left hand side here um, to indicate line numbers and then in your program if you wanted to go to another line you'd use the go to command and that's because in this example of basic you don't have line numbers you can actually use line numbers if you want to but there's not really a lot of point now because we've got this label command so you can just literally go to a certain label you can see label b here with a colon um, there goes to this command here which is input enter command so it enables you to make programs without line numbers which is actually a little bit more convenient so that's just about it for my general overview of the clockwork pico calc and what i've been kind of up to with it it'd be really interesting if you've got one of these and you've got different plans for different projects to know what you guys are up to with it um, so let me know in the comments on that i'm going to try and spend some time in the clockwork forums as well to answer any questions on this um, what's also really exciting I've been seeing in the community is the ability to actually add different modules to this um, hardware so for example I've already been seeing people putting different Pico clones in their clockwork Pico calcs um, with higher power processors so there's even somebody that's kind of running doom on it um, under Linux which is just absolutely insane and I've actually got one of those boards that can run Linux inbound at the moment so hopefully I'll be able to show you that in another video anyway hope you've enjoyed this one like and subscribe join my discord as well there's lots more information on Meshcore on there and I'll catch you next time.